Micah chapter 6, I noticed, I mean, I, I noticed in English uh, legal language. And so it made me wonder if the Hebrew was also legal language. And um, it looks like to me like the three words that are in verses 1 and 2 are definitely legal, legal languages. That's, is that what you saw too? I would call it justice language, but yeah. Interest, why justice language? I like that. That's interesting. Why would you call it justice language? Well, because well, they didn't follow the law. I mean, I guess that's why he's upset uh, with them. But okay, okay. But I call it justice language because as he goes on, he, he kind of talked about how he, uh, over time, has been working with them. You know what I mean? Right. So that standard thing is there. Um, I don't know. And plus, he uses like that, um, like he asks questions that he knows the answers to because he's got. <laughs> Right. So he's got that rhetorical question type thing going on, like why. Okay. He's like telling him like why, and then he like goes into the whole thing of what he's done for him, you know, emphasizing justice or emphasizing his righteousness, and they're not responding to it properly, taking him for granted, and um, it isn't just you broke the law; it's you broke my heart. <laughs> oh, which 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 is interesting that he's he uses the legal language to share with them that they broke his heart that i didn't i didn't even see that part of it i just i saw you you didn't follow my law you didn't set up what yeah. i set up with you with moses and yet it's he absolutely says <laughs> he says that but 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 you're right the the whole second half is actually you you broke my heart you broke i didn't i didn't see that that's a that's that's interesting um that i just caught the yeah. i just caught the mosaic right. i gave law you the law thing. i gave you this i gave you that and then you're going to all this other junk for life you're not coming to me and i'm the one that saved you and brought you out of slavery yeah gave you a land and it's like i wanted to have a love relationship with you and you're running after other gods and you're doing all this other stuff you've broken my heart guys and i gave you the law to help you learn how to love not to like you know say we're god's people and he'll forgive us like that wasn't the point but I see that in his rhetorical questions, you see. Okay. Why? He asked yeah. them why. Like, you have no reason why, guys. He's like, why? I don't, like, why? Like, he literally says why. Like, he knows. <laughs> so and, there's and why. The, and so those rhetorical questions lead him, lead them to to see how they broke his heart and how they they were disobedient. Yeah, he's still trying and, to, like, open their eyes. It's like, you guys are missing it here. And it's because, like, he led them as a people, but not necessarily, like, the people he's dealing with at the time. So he, he's saying that as a reminder, like, you know, look back to your heritage, like, you know, like, like they tell us, you know, we, we do our stuff. And they're like, oh, guys in the wars died for you guys. That's why you have freedom. It's like, don't forget mm. where you come from. Don't forget why you're where you're at, you know? Mm. So, I mean, we can relate to it in terms of... Uh, in terms of that, but I mean, this is even more so if you ask me. So we would call this justice language. The people are not following him. Um, and yet God asks rhetorical questions that leads them to see that they not only broke the law, but they also broke God's heart. It's rhetorical questions that show mm -hmm. the heart of God. And in verse three, he literally like answers his own question. I still think he's being kind of rhetorical, but. He's like, what do you guys really want? It's like, I'm, I get, I, what more can I do for you? Like, there's nothing more I can do for you guys. Like, what more do you want? And he's like, and all I'm really asking you to do is to behave. Like, I'm just mm. asking you to behave. <laughs> can't you just behave? It's like, even though you didn't behave, I still worked with you. It's like, can't you yeah. just behave? So I see that in there, too. Yeah. And so he's still trying to re, re, I mean, he's only saying that to like, like it's going to get hard now, guys, but like I'm still who I am, right? Now, it's interesting in that he just, he kind of, he wants them to behave. He wants obedience. And yet, and yet later, he kind of expands more on that, like in verses uh, like seven and eight and nine. But like, because he says, like, they've left justice behind, they've left kindness behind, they've left humbleness behind, and he's like, you've left, like, re reflecting me behind. 
Uh, and that's the part that I that I noticed a little bit later is that um, but they've also just left behind reflecting him. And that's and he's not OK with that. He's not OK with the rich men being wicked and the unbalanced scales and the um, and all of those actions that is that is obedience. But then it's also that they just they don't reflect him anymore. And I think that is. That's what I and you termed it as breaking his heart, and I was thinking they're just not reflecting him. Um, and you're looking at it from, not. yeah, and you're looking at it from more of God's like top like heaven to earth perspective, and I was probably looking at it more from earth looking up to heaven perspective. And then and then in verses eleven through twelve, like the 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 bottom half of the chapter, just that he's going to visit on them desolation and destruction. It's Everything that we've seen in Amos, everything we saw in that they were trying to avoid in Nineveh with Jonah, like it's all it's all the same. Um, yeah. the, the the result of sinfulness and disobedience is desolation and destruction from God. And I think the what he uh, the thing to take from that is is and it, one of the reasons I call it justice language is is you hear this in. Um, like revelations when they're singing and they're praising God and they're saying you are worthy okay. and like you're doing the right thing. You're doing like they're basically in there singing and praising God and he's like bringing destruction. And they're like you're doing the right thing. Mm. Um, and and I, that's what I hear here is God saying, like, I, what, why? Like, I've done everything for you. There's no reason for this misbehavior. And uh, by the way, I will not uphold the wicked. Before he says he won't uphold the wicked, he always like says why or points out all the good he's done and how he's how he's gave every how he's gave every opportunity. And that's why I call it justice language because he's gave every opportunity. It isn't just you broke the law and now you're going down. It's I, I've I've given every opportunity. I've I, I've went beyond the law. I've loved you, and there's no there's no reason for this. And so one of the one of the things that I that I take comfort from that, the prophets always show that like they always show, you know, God gave chances. I mean, Isaiah is full of prophecies for nations outside of Israel. But then so then and here's what I mean. Like, so, for example, in was I be first Samuel where God tells Saul to wipe out the Amalekites and. We we look at that and we're like, oh, why would God do that? Like, ah, that's that is we would say that's terrible. To me, we can insert based on all of God's actions, like that he he didn't just one day go, oh, these folks are wicked, they're gone. There were there were chances to turn it around. There were there were there were things that we didn't see maybe in the background. Like to me, there's always there's always chances for people to turn it around for repentance, for accepting God's grace, for being different. And we just don't we don't necessarily see that all the time. Yeah, I mean, I agree. OK, that makes sense. all right. I mean, that because that, that's one of those passages where I think people like the one with Saul. That's a, that's one of those things where, you know, they look at that and say, why would God do that? Like, why would God wipe yeah. out people? And and but he always says why. Well, he does. And you, he does. you might have had to read three books before or four or five, but there are reasons why. Right. And they don't and, see him all the long suffering before that happens. It's just like he shows up yeah. and they're just living life and he wipes them out. I'm like, no, that's not what's going on. Because, you know, they don't like him or whatever. It's like, no, that's not what's going on. There's always God's justice is always good and right and proper and has a context and and we don't always we don't always see that and that's and I think that that in in we just I've get talked, caught up in our feelings yeah well and as I've talked to people over the years like one of the objections is like well God wouldn't do you know the God I want to worship wouldn't do that the God I want that I worship you know wouldn't wipe out an entire people group. That's a that's a, a an object. It's a it's a common objection that I've that I've talked with people about. I mean, it's it's you know, I, it's it's also in some things that I've read, like people believe that God is one God in the Old Testament and he's another God in the New Testament because 
The God in the New Testament is all love and grace, and the God in the Old Testament is burning and 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 war. But they're but they don't they don't see that you know even in even in Micah six that this justice language leads way to chapter seven, which is which is God being gracious and saving and 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 even the chapters before which talk about the Messiah who's going to come and save the people from their sins. I mean, we, you know, at, we take this out of context and it seems like God is complaining to the people um, and he's going to destroy them and there's no reason for it. And it's just, there's always a reason. There's always a God, there's always a good, righteous, just reason for God's judgment. And, and in the end you have to accept that. And that's, that's not always easy to do as a human being. I mean, um, not easy for me neither, but I mean, you got to look at it and something like I made that, I made a video about that, that, uh, blog I did a few years ago about God's loss is the only true loss. Yeah. Yeah. And I was saying in there, uh, cause we have our human perspective. We think about us and we think about our safety and security and, uh, we don't want to suffer and all that. And we don't stop to think about like, as a person, how God feels. And it's like, mm. and that's why I like, I see that grief and his why. When he says why, I, I, mm. I feel that grief that God is saying it with. You know, he's not just saying why. He's not just yelling it. Why at them? Why? Why? You know, why? I'm going to hit you. Why? Hey, what he's doing. He's like, why? Like, it, guys, of all the people on earth, like, you, not you guys. Come on, not you guys. Not the I people you out that, of Egypt. Or right, not the people. About? Right, not the people that I drew out of the nations for myself. I was with you. I was present when I did that. Like he was present when he did that in the pillar, or what have you. But he was present with them. No other people group had that. Yeah. Why? He's saying why? It's like he's speaking to all that. It, there's emotion in that. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, and so in in like so in like in six eight. When he says, you know, you know what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to, have, you know, have justice and walk mm-hmm. in kindness and walk humbly right. with your God. He's like, this is all I ask you guys to do is behave. And like, you can't even do that. It's like, I'll carry the load, guys. Just behave. Like, I know you, mm. and that's, it's just hard. It's like, and we don't, like, we're just saying, we don't behave. Like, we might not be doing what they did or what have you, but it's like, because we're worried about self and we're supposed to like, deny ourselves, pick up our crosses, and follow Lord Jesus. And we just we just can't seem to get our head around that. <laughs> his uh, his his perspective of that, his broken. Yeah, I'm talking from I'm well, like and, so I was trying to speak to that. I'm like, you need to take that to heart, you know? Yeah. It's like he uh he his loss is the only true loss. Like I mean I I want to believe that every soul he brings into existence, he wants to have an intimate relationship for eternity. Yeah. When he don't, that's his loss. Because what, whatever whatever their life was, good or bad or what have you, like they got it because he gave it to them. It's gain on their part. Mm. It's all gain, it's all gain for them. Well, and and we don't often. And I wrote think down, of, but I didn't speak. You couldn't hear my emotion in what I wrote down. Yeah. Well, and and you and and even when we we do not associate God with loss, like we associate God with helping us with our loss. But like yeah. you said, like we don't, ex- we don't, we don't, we don't. And I'm associate. talking about the loss of relationship. I mean, he has a real loss mm. of relationship. I mean, I'm sorry. He, like, I know people will be like, no, he's like, it's like, no, he, God's more real than that. It's got God's just more, in my mind. God's more real now. I'm, I just don't buy it. Like, the no, and no, no, like, no, he wanted a relationship with every, all of us, all of us, and all of us together. It's like, he wants it all. He, no. He died for it all. I mean, in the end, he's going to be all in all. But what he's not in, like, is loss. Mm. It's loss that he didn't intend. It's like, you know, free will or what have you, you know? I know if you don't, like, believe in free will in that way, you just dismiss that. But I do, so I don't dismiss it because my God has, like, real feelings. (laughs) Well, immediately when you said that, I thought of the scene in Genesis where, He's walking in the garden in the cool of the day and and then Adam and Eve are hiding and there's a serious mm-hmm. there's there's shame, there's broken relationship. And, and that's again, what self is. That's what self but, is for us. It's hiding. 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 Mm. We hide behind well, it, self. 
Well, and and interestingly, though, he asks a rhetorical question in Genesis, yeah. you know, where are you or who told you? And, he, and he's doing the same thing in Micah 6. He is he's doing asking the same thing. Rhetor- he's asking rhetorical questions, which is reflecting the brokenness of his heart. That Because they like, sinned. That just... That just like connected for me, like right when oh, you yeah. said that, I'm like, boom. Well, that's where he's, that's where I get it from. Boom, like he's doing the same thing. That's amazing. No, that, that's where that, I get it from. I get it from the Genesis question. story. You get everything from the Genesis story. Well, <laughs> you know. Well, I'm I mean, just saying. Yeah, I mean, that, I do. <laughs> that's a that's a complete like connecting of the dots that I just made. That this that this rhetorical language in. Micah six is the same as in the garden. Like it's it's and it's and it's God's way of sharing his his broken heart with us. I mean, he was absolutely he was broken hearted in general. Like he like ah, they went away and and whew, that's and that's why that Jesus a, says deny yourself because self is like not the self we are in God, but just self. That's just our mask. That's just um, I heard a guy say what well, that's our fig leaf. That's what we're hiding behind. Mm. That's how we it's how we dress up. It's how we carry ourselves. It's it's the show we put on for everybody else. So they won't see see our flaws and such. And so in so in in Micah six, the, the legal language, he's presenting a case. It's justice language about his broken heart. The rhetorical questions kind of kind of show the heart of God. And then so what like is the like overall in Micah six, like what's the, the point? Like what's the the you know because i want to make sure that i get that you know oh man what the lord requires of you <laughs> but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with okay. your god which is what i just repeated but you gotta get self out of the way to do that well and they and 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 the the point is he's trying to get them to lead get self out of the way get you know get well, i'm your, saying that just, i mean he's i think he's just saying you know yeah, he's definitely saying they're in trouble. They got no reason for their misbehavior, or he's saying why. Maybe they got reason, but why? Right. Why aren't you just coming to me with this stuff, guys? Why are you going to, uh, you know, other gods or what have you? Why are you building relationships outside? Well, well, and it's interesting you talked about the other gods because it says in there, I forget in which verse it was, about how they're like sacrificing. Maybe it's verse seven. Oh, yeah, they're going seven. to meet they're their like needs. They're going to other gods. Children. Yeah, they're like sacrificing their firstborn to other gods, like. And that's what he's saying. It's like, why, what? guys? Like, remember who I am again? Right. Remember who I am? You know, the one that led you out? Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Because they're, you know, accountability to the other gods works a lot different than accountability to God. Once you sin, you want to hide from God. You don't got to hide from those other guys. They'll just work with you anyways. <laughs> I mean, it's just an easy road. You know what I mean? I mean, why do people just, like, lean on, uh, you know, drugs and alcohol and broken relationships and all the stuff they lean on. It's just yeah. idolatry. When you get down to it, it's idolatrous living. They don't even realize they're being idolatrous, especially if they're like just doing it on the side or what have you. And they still, you know, love Jesus or whatever. These people will tell you that their God was Yahweh. Most of them anyways. Yes. Yeah. No, they would. Absolutely. I, I mean, know a lot certainly... of people. I know a lot of people that say Jesus is everything to them. It don't look like it to me. I mean, maybe that's judgmental on my part, but. They wouldn't do some of the stuff they do if he was hanging out with them, like in the flesh. They wouldn't do it. I'll just talk about myself. I wouldn't do some of the things. I, and I'm not even doing anything bad. You know what I mean? In this Micah 6, like he's saying, you know, he lays out this case. And the, the end result of him sharing the legal language of the justice language, sharing his broken heart, the the idea is that then they would then deny the sinful nature deny the the idols the the spiritual or they as a nation going forward hopefully right but they would they would turn repent go back to him um and 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 it's and yeah because he didn't say he's given up on him he just said he's not gonna uphold wickedness right well and and the well and i know and we know he doesn't give up on him because there is chapter seven like chapter seven is he's sending help Right, he's, he's going to the extreme measures, but he's sending help. <laughs> yeah, like, and so that's interesting that it's he. I don't know, and it, and it well, and I mean, he they already though have the promise in yeah. in five uh, and even a little bit in four of the Messiah, like the Messiah yeah. is coming, the the righteous one, the awesome one, the the one that's going to fix us is coming. So, um, it's it's just interesting how in the in the midst of 
God saying, I'm not going to uphold wickedness. He's got hope on either side. And yet we never see the hope. Usually like we just see, oh, God is or, or maybe others or people who aren't believers see God as judgmental. He's he's wick, you know, he's wicked for judging people. Um, and yet there's hope on either side. There is there's expectations on either side. I, I find that interesting that that it's well, it's because it's not his lifestyle that 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 we're focused on. It's like uh, the good life mm. in the here and now that we're focused on.